Hello YouTube, welcome to the crypto recap for the week of 14 May 2022. My name is Cody, the Coin Raptor. So starting with the Bitcoin charts. All right, so Bitcoin broke through multiple levels of support that we outlined last week. It busted through the 33,000 level, it busted through support at 29,000, and it went down with the broader market. The market collapsed. All the uh, liquidity rushed out of the market, and unfortunately, that also happens to be a lot of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So a lot of traders, obviously very uh, scared at, uh, at the recent news that we've gotten uh, with the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, being higher than most people expected. And there's been speculation that the Fed could continue raising interest rates and maybe even go higher than they were currently expecting, like a 75-point um, a basis rate hike. So this news combined with uh, the other uh, macro news has led to uh, a huge drop in Bitcoin price. So it crushed through all those support levels that we talked about before. And now what you're seeing is um, it found a... A new low at about uh, 25,000 or so, 25,300. It went down. It wicked all the way down to that level on the on the 12th of May, and and then it rallied all the way back up again. Hit its head on about 31,000, and then now you can see I have outlined here that we have a downward channel. So right now Bitcoin is part of a downward channel, and I've kind of drawn this up here, and we're going to be trading in this channel uh, for the foreseeable future. We're looking to see if we can have a breakout uh, on the upper end here. But for now, um, our new support level is going to be that 25,000 region or so. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is the Bitcoin realized price. And so what the realized price is, it's the value of all Bitcoins at the price they were bought divided by the number of Bitcoins in circulation. This gives you kind of an average cost basis at, at which all Bitcoin uh, were, was purchased. Um, and that's basically your realized price. So I have it here. The Bitcoin realized price shows you the best zones for accumulation. Now, this is kind of different than the Bitcoin rainbow chart that I also featured on my Twitter uh, profile that shows you the price chart based on whatever a price point Bitcoin is currently at, which is useful all the time. The Bitcoin realized price is most useful when you see the current price come near the realized price. So when it comes under that realized price, that's when you have major points of potential accumulation. Now, uh, the realized price right now is about 25289 So anything below that level, that's going to be prime territory to do, uh, to do additional Bitcoin accumulation. I know I'm going to be looking to put additional money in at that point, at that 25000 under that level. We got really close to that point, and we may have actually dipped under it for a brief period of time during that big crash that we talked about. So I... This is, this is a really good indicator, um, and it generally defines the, the bear markets too here. So with the bear markets, you're going to see them dip under that realized price, okay? And then uh, as soon as they climb out of that realized price, that pretty much marks the end of that bear market cycle. So the only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't tell you how long the bear market cycles are. But if you're prepared... That's a prime zone for accumulation, and I'll be looking for that as well. If you're interested in that, if you want to know more about that, let me know, and we'll talk more about this Bitcoin realized price. That's something I'll be monitoring uh, on my Twitter account. All right, so next I want to go ahead and talk about the ETH charts. So we talked about Bitcoin. Much like Bitcoin, ETH has also had a huge drop at about the same time because ETH tends to follow Bitcoin. Um, ETH is, is much the same story we have here. It's also trading in this channel, uh, this downward channel at the moment. Uh, you can see that it has the ultimate resistance at about 2150 or so in that region. Now, we're looking for a break above that level to, um, to push ETH even higher. But right now, I, I've drawn in the channel right now with ETH at about 2000. 
25, 2050, around that region. And if we break out past that channel, definitely bullish. I definitely feel bullish about ETH, and especially in the long term. The long term, the long term ETH and Bitcoin trends are still intact, and that that's going back to when they were uh, first trading. So at this point, we're uh, we're in the middle of a uh, a crypto bear market, but it's also prime accumulation territory, and that's what I'm that's what I've been doing. I've been dollar cost averaging in little by little to uh, to hodl, and then. My plan usually is to wind up selling when, once I'm at a, a two times profit to start selling and then gradually selling out of the position and going into another accumulation phase. So that's my long-term plan for Bitcoin and ETH. We also have to mention the Terra Luna disaster. And this was such a huge event that it almost deserves its own video. And a lot of the stuff I've actually already covered as part of my Twitter account. But just know that the... Terra Luna system had a colossal failure and you could kind of imagine it liken it to a run on the bank where everyone kind of went to the system and they all wanted to withdraw their funds at the same time and it just crashed the whole system and as a result the Luna token value plummeted from over a hundred dollars down to approximately fractions of a penny in about a week or so so just huge huge wipeout of value in that whole system since the terra luna system's total and complete collapse the founder do Quan has put out a plan in order to restore faith in the terra and luna community and so we'll see if that actually gets executed and we see a return to uh, the previous values for luna but it won't be anytime soon the circulating supply is well into the trillions and at this point it would be almost impossible to regain even a dollar so they're gonna have to bring that circulating supply back down to a reasonable level in the millions preferably or the uh, plan itself was for a a return of about a billion or so in the circulating supply so we'll see uh, how that progresses and i'll keep you guys updated on my twitter account when i get new information another huge story of the week was the german government's tax exempt status for purchased bitcoin and eth so as you can see here uh, this article that i brought up on coin telegraph uh, for private individuals the sale of purchased bitcoin and ether is tax-free after one year the deadline is not extended to 10 years if for example bitcoin was previously used for lending or the taxpayer provided eth as a stake for somebody to create their block so what this means in principle is that if you live in germany the federal ministry of finance uh outlined clear tax rules for cryptocurrency and virtual assets saying that you can have bitcoin and eth if you've had it for longer than a year then it is tax free this is huge news for the cryptoverse because now you have a modern economy and a first world country that's coming out and saying if you hold bitcoin or eth for for greater than a year they're not going to they're not going to tax you on it and you can imagine that for long term hodlers this is a massive win this is right up there with fidelity saying that they're going to be providing uh, Bitcoin 401ks. What we're seeing here is mass adoption, and this is fantastic news. So I don't want to. I don't want to end the week on on bad news with the uh, crypto crash and the Terra Luna disaster. But I wanted to end it on good news here, and you can see that many other countries are going to be looking towards Germany, and they're going to be seeing the kind of example that germany is setting for cryptocurrency and they're going to follow their lead as well so i expect to see other countries um, also becoming more crypto friendly all right that concludes our crypto recap of the week again my name is cody the coin raptor and thanks for joining me please like and subscribe uh comment um, if there's anything you want me to see me do differently or a topic you'd like me to cover, then I'd be more than happy to oblige. Follow me on Twitter. The uh, link's in the description. Thank you very much. Again, this is not financial advice. This is purely for entertainment purposes and largely of my own opinion. 